And so your last race was the Eugene Marathon. It was. How was it? It was good. I mean, it was two weeks after Boston, so yeah. I didn't know if I was going to race the whole marathon. Right. But like in the end, I just decided to go with it because I was feeling great. No, nothing hurt. I was kind of, I felt recovered. I mean, not 100%, but I felt good. Yeah. So I decided to go with it. <laughs> and it was super fun. It was way better than Boston because of the weather. Right. I hate running in the sun. So yeah. this one was cold. It was a way smaller race which is good as well because, you know, everything's easier. The majors can't, are getting, well, they've always been, but now they're, like, a little more complicated than in other races in terms of, you know, getting to the start line. and Right. Like, with in terms of, like, the security and getting bus there and then... It exactly. You like... have to... It takes you, like, four hours to get to the start line. So by then you've lost, like, a ton of energy and, like, your mind... You need to like really control your mind during those four hours because otherwise you're going like crazy. Like, oh, I need to run now. I need to get this. Yeah. <laughs> so I was going to ask you about that because I see, obviously, you're, you're a six-star finisher, but this wasn't your first Boston, was it? No, it was my second. Okay. So which was your, which was the, your sixth star? It was London in 2019. Okay. So you've been mar- doing, how many marathons have you done? 14. 14. Yes. So you know a thing or two about marathons. <laughs> yeah, I think I do. <laughs> and you're also a coach. Every time I run yeah. one, yeah, yeah. every time I run one, I'm like, how am I supposed to do this? <laughs> That's so funny. So how do you, like, how do you do, like, I mean, exactly what you did. Like, you did Boston, then you did Eugene. Like, how do you do that back to back? Is it, like, something you can build into your running over the years? where you're just always able to kind of jump in to a marathon or is it something specific that you do? Training no, I mean, this was the first time I've ever done that. I didn't oh, really okay. plan it. No, I, like the closest I've ever run two marathons, I think it must've been like a month and a half. So it's okay. quite a few weeks, no? You, you, you recover yeah, you time a couple recover. of weeks and then you like taper again and then you run. But this one, I didn't really plan it. So it was Eugene at the beginning and then Boston came in, so I decided to make my priority race Boston. Right. And I just I just said, after running Boston, I, I'll see how I feel. We already had the trip planned, you know, airplane tickets, uh, okay. hotel. So I was going to go to Eugene with my husband anyway. And I love running. So I decided not to pressure myself. I was going to see how, how it went. And uh, I don't, I, it went, like, great. I felt I didn't have any injuries, which is super... Amazing yeah. for me. I always get an injury during marathon training. So I ran Boston. I decided to prioritize um, like food, massages, rest, sleep, just to get like as best to get to the race day as best as I could after running a marathon. Um, but I think that all the years of running and the base I have really helped to yeah. achieve that. So uh, what's your base like usually? Like where do you keep your base at? I guess that swimming something I do a lot I try I'm like right now I'm trying to take a break from running because mm-hmm. I think that my stress fractures are due to never stopping running right. like I run a marathon I'm like I need to keep running I need to keep running I don't want to lose any of my fitness and, and, and a year and a half after that I break so right I, I know it's a combination of many things but I'm starting to think that might be one so right now I'm taking off I ran yesterday, though. I'm not training. I just ran uh, 12Ks yesterday and 5Ks during the week. But um, I'm just starting to swim. Yeah, so, that's great. To keep back like, my fitness there. Because it's always the worst when you take a break from running and then you go back and then you feel like super, you're like yeah. the worst runner ever. And I'm like, oh, I want to get swimming back to that was. Yeah, no, and swimming is so good because it's a similar cardio system. So, like, cycling is also great. I think I saw on your Instagram that you also you also ride, right? You also yes. cycle. So I don't like those, it very much, but I do. You don't like it? Mm-mm. That's so funny. Well, um, but did you recently get into it, or you've always done it, cycling? Like, cycling I did when I used to run triathlons. I was, like, okay. 18 at the time. I ran, like, oh, okay. maybe 6, 7. Okay. I fell a couple of times from the bike. So that's one of the reasons I don't like cycling. Got it. But after that, I started running and it's been an on and off thing. Like whenever I feel something's hurting, I go on the bike and it's easier than going swimming, right? You have to go drive to the pool. It takes a lot of time. The bike, I have my bike at at my house. 
so it's easier. But I've never really liked it. Though, when I think about of it, when I think of it as a way to keep my running fitness, I'm like, okay, I'll just do it. <laughs> well, I think you know, like when I as a, you're also, I know a triathlete. You had your time in triathlon, and I think that one of the things that I take from triathlon to running is that like you have the other sports. So it's not as much impact on your body. But if you're not running as much, it's kind of like, what do you give up? And I kind of feel like how you feel about cycling, about swimming. So I just never want to go to the pool. <laughs> yeah, me neither. I actually texted um, a trainer last week and I'm like, I need you to train me. I might sign up for a race like in a couple of weeks, but if I don't have like a train training plan, I am yeah. just not going to go to the pool or I'm going to go, I'm going to swim for like 20 minutes. I'm, I'm going to say it. I'm done with it. So, so she sent me a training plan and now I'm running. I'm, I swam a lot last week. <laughs> That's great. That's amazing. That, that will be great yeah. for your running. I honestly think like when you take a break from a sport and go back to it, as long as you're maintaining your fitness, you'll be okay. It will still be like a little bit of a challenge, but you might even feel better. Like, I, I don't know. know. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And you also like, in addition to being a six star finisher, a marathoner, having like all this sports and athleticism in your background, you have over 434,000 Instagram followers, your yeah. own business separate and apart from Instagram and how old is your son? He's so adorable. You have a new baby. He's not. He's gonna be two in July. Okay. Wow. Oh, he's an official toddler now. <laughs> he's a toddler. He is so adorable. I love how you integrate all of your running and being a mom and family into your Instagram. Yeah, he's super cute. I'm really enjoying him. <laughs> That's great. I know, and and you had great like babysitters when you were up in Boston and then in Oregon? Yes. My sisters-in-law help a lot. Otherwise, I don't know how we do it. I mean, we wouldn't be able to travel as much or someone would run the race and the other one would take care of the baby. I think that's right. what we would do. Because your husband has... is also an athlete. Yes, he also runs marathons. He likes it. So what came first? Uh, marathons or Instagram? For me, marathons. Okay. My first marathon, I ran my first marathon 10 years ago in Montreal. Okay. So I was, I don't, no, I didn't have followers on Instagram. I actually got big on that, on social media after going on a TV show in Mexico City. Well, in Mexico. Oh. In Mexico City. Yes. It was the kind of survivor show. So, cool. Yes, it was fun. <laughs> so that helped me out. I was on TV for four months and the show did really good. Okay. So helped me out. And then I find that people that like running are the ones that are sticking with me. Other people are like, she's not on TV anymore. She's not like famous or whatever. Right. So just hate and follow, which is fine. But I like that people who run and who find something like interesting on my life or whatever I share. Yeah. Oh, so that's so interesting. So, so what was the name of the TV show? It was Reto Cuatro Elementos. Reto Cuatro Elementos? Yes. So it's the four elements. It, Okay. There were the four, the four elements, water, fire, air, and earth. And you competed like on each one with different challenges. And whenever you lost, you'd go to the underworld. And to get out of the underworld, you'd have to do these challenges, like disgusting ones where you had to oh move up. Oh had my God. Be, <laughs> you had to be with snakes all around you and find a key to get out. Or you had to put your face in blood. It was not blood, but yeah, there were worms inside and stuff. It, I am How, not, like, what, like, what led you there? Like, was acting part of your career path? Like, did you want to, like, what were you thinking? I'm just, no, actually, it's funny. Like, in 2010, I signed up for Miss Mexico, like, by myself. I just wanted to okay. go, so I, I went there. And then after that, I did some modeling. And then mm -hmm. years after that, the one of the girls that worked at that uh, model agency called me and said, oh, we have the perfect, the perfect TV show for you. Uh, you're such sporty. I'm, I'm sure you're going to win, blah, blah, blah. And I went like, okay. I didn't have a boyfriend at the time. I was just, I had finished university. I was working with my cakes. So like I could do whatever I wanted with my time. I yeah. went to do the casting. It was like two girls and me. And I remember this guy said, okay, so we're going to take you to a beach. You're going to be like, apart from everyone, you're not going to be able to use your phone. And I remember this girl that was with me was super shocked with that, with that idea. She was like, no, no way. How am I not going to have my phone? I really said, oh my God, thank you for that. Obviously. I mean, yeah, 
he kind of explained what the show was going to be about. And I was like, okay, I'll just try it. And then, like, the next week, they just called me and said, okay, you're in. So That's uh, amazing. So, yeah, it was fun. And I so like to say yes to things whenever, like, I can. <laughs> I, I think I have, I'm similar, but, like, I don't think I would say yes to that because I would be, like, so freaked out that I would have to, like, be with spiders or do, like, <laughs> I think I have, like, a barometer, like, a, like a, a line where I would draw the line. Like, I said yes to high rocks i don't know like i live vicariously through my friends who are like you who would say yes to like the show isn't the big idea isn't like the problem it would be like the challenges that you'd have yeah. that i would have to do like if it involved like bugs or spiders or any of those things like i would be out like i would be <laughs> in the underworld forever um but like i said yes to something the other day like someone asked me if i wanted to do a high rocks competition have you heard of this no so it's like this, it's like, you know, like a marathon or like a triathlon. It's a fitness event that is very popular in Europe and becoming more popular in the U.S. And basically it's like CrossFit on speed. You're basically doing like carries and lunges with sandbags and um, sled pushing and squats, throwing a ball into the wall. All things I don't do ever and hate so much. Mm-hmm. And I just thought... It's a great way to jumpstart my strength training. So, and do you have to run as well or not? Yes, you also have to run. So I haven't even really, like the running part, I think I have, but the rest of it, it's going to be, it's in June. But like, I always say, like, I'll say yes to anything. And then I'm like, wait, but wait. And I talked to someone like you who said yes to that show. I don't know if that would be a yes for me, but that is, that is like so cool. But yeah, you should do the High Rocks thing if it comes to Mexico I think City. there was one a month ago so it didn't have that name but it sounds familiar and i think a guy who runs a lot won so we were talking about this with other friends the other day and we were like yes i mean if you have like you know the fitness that you get from running is just a matter of strength training a little bit and then you have like and like a huge advantage over everyone else because most people hate running yes no right strength training is doable but running for Especially for people who strength train. Like, right, I, they hate it. Yeah. They hate it. <laughs> they hate it, hate it. And runners, they're like, mm, maybe I'll try it. So you could do good. Just yeah, I think we'll see. We'll see. So how did you get into running, though? Like, was that something that you've done your whole life? or? Yes, I got into running after running for Athens. I decided I didn't like swimming anymore because my mom, I was always in swimming competitions during my childhood and my mom was okay. always, you have to swim, you have to swim, you have to swim. So I was like, I'm sick of running. This was, this is me at 16. Yeah. And uh, no, 18 or so. And then the bike, I didn't like because I fell. And then every time I competed in a triathlon, everyone would just pass me on the bike. Like I would, I'm, I'm a good swimmer, not the best, but I'm good better than many people because many people are very bad swimmers <laughs> yeah <laughs> so whenever you're like a little bit better than them you're very good um, yeah totally I agree so I would come out in the first places uh, after swimming and then everyone was just go like bye Monica bye and it was really frustrating because I just couldn't go any faster and after that I ran and I didn't like running at the time because like, everything would hurt yeah um I would get pain on my stomach on my shoulder and obviously the heat because it's like 11 in the morning and you're running yeah. So I'm like, I hate this. <laughs> so I told my mom I didn't want to do triathlons anymore. And I just stayed at the gym. And then my mom invited me to run um, the weekend races here in Mexico City with her friends. And I'm like, I was like, okay, I'll do them. I don't know. I, I just enjoyed the post race. During the race, I was most of the time not really liking it. But after that, after running, I was like, ah, maybe I like this. Yeah. So I ran my first half marathon, a really hard race in Mexico City with a lot of uphills. I finished that. I was 16. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't really train because at that time you you couldn't find any trainers like you do now. Right. If you want to train today, you you find you have like a ton of options. No. Back then it was only one man and only, I don't know, people 40, 50 years old were running. So I was 16. There's no way I'm going to run with those all people <laughs> totally no? yeah I mean it, it was definitely that was like like when I look back like you know about like 15 years ago like it wasn't it wasn't as much of like a young sport running no no now it is but yeah 
It is, but you still see very. I mean, you see I, in Boston. I was looking out for people. I mean, I was looking at people. Yeah. And we saw a lot of fifty, sixty yeah. year old people running. So there's still that, but the young people are getting this in. huge amount of young people coming in. Yes. It's amazing, like all the endorphins. Yes, and that's how you you're starting to see. Well, no, you're starting maybe like a couple of years or so. People running like really fast. Yeah, instantly. And, no, yeah. how many people did you know before that ran under three hour marathons? Like not, very few. Not a lot. Not a lot. And now every everyone's like, oh, I run a soft three marathon. What was your, what's your fastest? What's your PR time marathon? 302. Okay. So, yes. and where did you York. start? Like, I mean, well, you started when you were 16. So that's like pretty young, right? See, so I started you when I was fast. 16. I yes. ran my half marathon. I hated it. I was like, how on earth do people run this twice? Because yeah. I didn't train. It was just like the fitness I had from swimming, yeah. from triathlons, from going to the gym. And I just decided I like challenges. So my mom said, here's the half marathon. And I was like, okay, I'll go do it. So I started running half marathons without really training the way I do now. And I went to live to Canada when I was 25, 24, 24. Yeah. And I decided to sign up for the marathon because I had no one in Montreal. Yeah. In Montreal. Yes. I didn't know anyone. It was like a personal challenge. It was like a week or two after my birthday. So it was going to be like my birthday gift. I signed up my mom. I signed up my brother. I was like, okay, you guys are going to come. We're going to run together. And then I'm going to go back to Mexico after nine months. So I started training with an app. And yeah, nine months go by. I run my marathon. My mom doesn't come. My brother doesn't come. I run it by myself. I had like a boyfriend back then. And like, he waited for me with flowers. That was it. That's like, sweet. No one came to cheer for me <laughs> except for him. Um... It was 316, which was really good. Yeah. And I didn't know it was good. I was just like, That's ah, amazing. I was 16 marathon. I was 24. 24? Yeah, 24. Um, and then I started working with Adidas. They, they sponsored me. Originally, for a while. yeah. And I started running like a lot of half marathons all over um, Latin America. And after that, well, during that, I ran Boston, I ran Berlin. Uh, and then I run Mexico City, but those were like hard years for me because I started getting injured. I mean, I started getting injured. Yeah. Um, shin splints were like hell for me. They still are, but now I'm, I know how to like control them. Yeah. Um, so obviously I wanted to run faster. I ran Boston's 316, like 10 seconds uh, faster than I did in Montreal. And then I ran at 325, 330, because I was always injured, always. Right. But I was also signing up for the, all the marathons I could, right? <laughs> so I never really stopped. Um, and then I went to this TV show. I was there for four months, so no running. I oh, came wow. Up. Okay. I, I trained for New York, and I ran at 303. That was like, wow. That's amazing. That's, yes. That is an amazing time. And especially, I mean, that is an amazing time period in but that was also an amazing time in new york based on your times that you've been doing yeah yeah that was great so i was like whoa finally and then i ran the i did the dopey challenge after that and then i ran london obviously when i got to london i was injured yeah i, I ran a 302 swimming almost swimming all the time which was impressive i know swimming works for, for running but yeah no, <laughs> i don't like you it used that. it for that race for training right yes i yeah. swam a lot because i got i had um i don't remember how to say it a, a sprain a strain a strain a spra well both you could have a sprain or a strain sprained ankle my cat my like, um, my hamstr hamstring hamstring you strained your hamstring strain that. yeah it was very bad i ended up well that one was bad, but then I ran London. I took a break, and then I started running again because I wanted to win the Niagara Falls Marathon. Okay. I love so it. So I yeah. started running again, and it started getting worse and worse and worse and worse. In the end, I just couldn't run the marathon. I ended up um, wearing... I forgot the name as well. A boot? Uh, no, like not the... a boot. <laughs> crutches. Crutches, crutches, yes. I got... I it was horrible. Through. I couldn't I even speak, walk. I speak like sign language. <laughs> like, crutches. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. 
Uh, but that, that's like me. I always sign up for many races. I love running. I love running fast. I love training like hard to get yeah. faster. But it hasn't worked for me because I don't know. I don't take breaks. I wasn't eating as much as I should. Like for this training cycle, I went to the nutritionist. I took um, supplements. I yeah. ate more and it went better. So I'm like, okay, I'll just keep it like that and take a break. Yeah. And I mean, I, th I feel like, you know, it is really exciting, like all this energy around the world major marathons and this whole new like infusion of runners in their like 20s in their, you know, I would say 20s. And yes, just this like fresh kind of energy around running and marathoning. But I feel like you know, it's a lot to do all of them in one year. And I see people doing them back to back to back. And I mean, and as I say that, and as I see that, I mean, I would do a half marathon every month if there was one that yeah, I'm trained for that, right? Like, that's my normal training. Like I can ease not ease, I can easily do a half marathon easily. Will it be fast? No, but it will be not hard for me to like ramp up to that. And I feel like that's where like for a lot of my listeners, like if they're, you know, just getting into marathoning and they want to do, and it doesn't even have to be the six, you know, the six star, you know, the six, the world majors. It could be like, you know, grandma's marathon. Have you done that? I or want to, mm -hmm. to do that one. Or, you know, when I interviewed um, Chris from the Westin, he mentioned the flying pigs marathon in Cincinnati, which, I mean, to me, it feels like, doing sort of more edgy fringe marathons could be cool with like less people. Yes. Less exactly. people. But I don't, I mean, I, I obviously like, I'm just kind of dialing into my whole marathon journey. Like I'm, and I'm, I'm just doing what's easy for me, which is like anything local, which I think makes sense. But, um, you know, Tokyo does sound really cool. <laughs> <laughs> it is though, but all the traveling and you know, the time. It's change, a lot. Yeah. It's it is a lot. How do you and deal with that? Because you, and you live in Mexico city. So we are yes. like, we are talking, we're like two hours apart, but, um, but how do you manage like your nutrition, hydration and sleep when you travel to do these races? Cause yeah. I tried the first time I ran Berlin, which was my first time running a marathon, like overseas and with this time change. Yeah. It went really bad. Because I got there on, I think, Friday. Um, the marathon was on Sunday. Right. So I was super stressed because I was like, I'm not going to be able to sleep. Um, I tried to force it. Like, we got there and I, I told him I went with my brother and I was like, no, we're not going to sleep. So I remember we were falling asleep <laughs> on the subway. So I slept and then I went to the uh, pick up my bib. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm so tired. I don't know how I'm going to make it. So after that, I decided to get like as early as possible to a race, if it's possible. So I tried to get there by Wednesday, Thursday at the most. Yeah. To just have one day to try to like chill and try yeah. to sleep and try to rest. But Tokyo, I think I got there on Thursday. I mean, Wednesday. Yeah. So it wasn't that bad. But it's, it's so still, far. It's very stressful. And it's super stressful when you're trying to go for a PR. Which right. is something that I really, like, I'm starting to question myself. And I would just tell everybody else. You don't need to go for a PR to this races. I mean, it's it's a big deal to go to these races because of everything it implies. But it's like an extra factor that's going to, like, really stress you. Yeah. Um, I agree. Yeah. So I just would not try to PR in again in Tokyo or in London just right. because of this. But you would I mean, go back I would start running again. and see how I yeah. feel, but yeah. it would not be like, I have to, I have to, I have to, because you might not be rested enough. You might be like super tired because of all the playing. I mean, the yeah, the plane, um, the food, you know, you know, you try to eat good on planes, but it's never possible. You try to hydrate, right. but they are like, uh, and especially if the plane is full of runners, they're like, oh my God, we don't have any water anymore. It happened to me. <laughs> yes. Yes. It oh my God. Okay. Like to Boston. I brought my bottle and I was like, can you fill it up? And they just would not fill it up because 
they had to like give to, give to everyone else and i understood but i was like oh no that's good to know because you know i will show up on the airplane with like 12 bottles of water from like the duty free shop or whatever yes but then you spend like tons of money on water as well like, oh, i have, I have a thing with seven dollars i have like a thing with flying that i have to get like one of the tall tall bottles of smart water uh-huh. and i have like if obviously if it's like a three four hour flight i will like drink the whole thing and i will I'm so crazy about flying, but it's all like crazy OCD stuff. And um, (laughs) I would probably like, I heard I was signed up to do the Paris marathon in April, this past April. Yeah. And so many things like started to happen that made me not want to go that I just decided not to train for it. But the, the like icing on the cake. And since we're going to talk about baking was like, (laughs) was like I, I got COVID like at the, and I had it, I couldn't ramp my mileage back up without being just totally exhausted. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I just said like, okay, this is the ultimate sign. But I heard that in Paris they run, have you done the Paris marathon? Not yet. No. So I heard that they run out of water <sighs> on the course and in the Bois de Boulogne, but like by the time you get there, I don't know. So I was just like, I don't know if I can handle that <laughs> like, yes, because yes. I fill up my water bottle with water, but I also run with a handheld. So I don't know. I just, you know, I just built up all these like things. I don't know if you ever do that. Uh, built up all these mental hurdles to, before I even like got to the start line. So I was just like, you know, I'm just going to do New York. Let's just like <laughs> start with what is here where I don't need to yes. put myself in. Like, but I definitely want to do the Paris marathon. I want to do that too. Do you have like, which Indeed. ones uh, have been your favorites so far and which ones are on your bucket list? My favorite, New York. It was York. a great race. I always say that the, like the marathon you like best is the one where you perform best or where you feel best. So right. New, okay. New York. Um, I felt great. The weather was great. I love the city. I love running in New York. It's always been great for me. This, I told you I run um, the New York half and it was also a PR. Yeah. Um, I think that was a great day. Are, yeah. Yes, it was a great day as well. So that was my favorite. Um, I also like, I really like Eugene. Really okay. liked it. I would do it again. Okay. A smaller marathon. Maybe like the start line is quite crowded. I would just change that. But everything else was great. And my bucket list, Paris would be one. Sydney eventually. Yeah. But that, like, I would have to plan a trip for like three weeks to go to that one <laughs> and then arrive there a week earlier and then run and then stay one after. So I need to sit Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. That's like a three week trip. It's so far. Yes. It's so far. So far. Um, I want to do the Prague marathon. Madrid would also be fun. What attracts you most to a race? Is it the scenery? Is it the, is it the city? Like, are you more of like a, let's do I a think beach. the first is the weather. Okay. So, okay. yeah, weather and scenery. Okay. Uh, whatever you can do after. So, cities, right? Yeah. But I would run a marathon in the heat. I'm sure I'm not, I would never, I would not like it. I mean, Boston was hell for me. And last time I ran Boston was also hot. So, I was like, no, I don't like this. I would still do it, though. Yeah. For, like, the trip afterwards. Yeah. So, if you were like, Monica, would you run a marathon in Mallorca? I don't know, 30 degrees Celsius degrees. I'd be like, well, what's going to happen after that? <laughs> Are we going to like travel around? Okay. Yeah. And I just preferred my mind. I would try to, I would try to train in the heat and. When do I'll you. Try. And grandma's would probably be perfect, right? Cause it's in June, but it's cold in Minnesota. Oh. Yes. We were going to run that, but then yeah. my husband decided Eugene, I don't know why, but yeah. okay. So do you guys do, do you try to do races together? Yes. Since we've been together, we've run them. We've run everything together. Almost everything. Besides Boston that he didn't get a a number. (laughs) Okay. But aside from that, uh, when we travel, yes, we run together. In Mexico, where did we meet? At the um, physiotherapist? Oh, okay. That's, that's right. So yeah, tell me that story. Cause that was what we were talking about when we met up in Boston that you guys yeah, met. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, Fran, Francisco was training for his first marathon. 
Um, he had like something on his ankle, it hurt. And this was a time when I was trying to train for the Nia Niagara Falls Marathons to win. And I just overtrained and I kept running. <laughs> so every time I start to get injured, instead of resting, what I do is like try every physio out there to see who has like the magic wand <laughs> to just, yeah, seriously. I you are not alone. You, you have found your other person. That was me before. This uh, time, like yeah. when I got my my stress fracture for Berlin, I just didn't try anything. I was like, I'm not going to waste my time. I know this is only going to go away with rest. Are you going to rest, Monica? No. Okay. So, so don't go waste your time or your money. Just right. deal with it. But yeah, so that was me going to every physio I could find, asking everyone who they, who they um, felt was like the best or who had like the weirdest remedy. So I tried right. everything. And um, this guy told me once, oh, I have like the perfect match for you. This guy has, is a baker and you're a baker too. So maybe you could like meet and hang out and maybe see if you like each other. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. I dated many guys. I was at the point in my life when, Monica, do you want to meet this guy? Yes, I can meet him. Do you want to meet this okay. other guy? Yes. <laughs> it's always a yes to everything. Right. So I went with dinner with a lot of guys, dinner, and that was it. Like one dinner, I'm like, oh, no, I don't like you. Goodbye. So he like arranged, um, arranged for us to be there at the same time. And he was like, oh, Monica, this is Francisco. Remember the baker I told you? I'm like, hi, hi, la, la. He was super serious, thinking, oh, my God, this can't be, this can't really be it. <laughs> he hated the fisty for doing that because he was like, I'm not a child. I don't need you to introduce me to this girl. Right. Um, he, the physio, he was like 100% sure Francisco knew me because people who run tend to no, know each other. Like Francisco yeah. ha didn't have any idea who I was. He actually saw me in one of the races like three weeks before and I was, uh, I was, I don't know, they were shooting me for something. And he was like, oh my God, who's that girl? I mean, we're here to run, not to shoot things. <laughs> <laughs> he was, oh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, guess who was there? That's so, so funny. He asked me out, went on a dinner, and then another dinner, and then we started dating. And then we got married. That's <laughs> so cool. That. That. Yes. I love that. I love that story so much. And and like meeting you both together, like you are definitely like very much more the like extroverted, like outgoing, but he definitely like you could see he can match you in that extrovertedness, like once you get him talking. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yes. I like, I thought that was so cool. And so <laughs> did you guys get into baking? So you also are a baker and you bake cakes. So tell me about your business because I don't know if you don't have a shop, right? Like you do private or you do have I a do shop. I do like, uh, not deliveries, but well, like pick up. I do pickups. Okay. So I started, I went to university and I graduated on graphic design. Okay. After that, I went to look to Canada just to learn French and to work. So tu uh, parles français? Oui. Tu parles français? Okay. Oui. En petit peu. <laughs> Not very good. Not as good as English, but... No. Well, my understand. French is better than my Spanish, so... <laughs> and my uh, English Québécois is... Québécois is, like, super hard. Even though I went to school for six months, I would sit with the other girls at the bakery, and I'd be like, what are you guys saying? <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, yeah, so I sorry, I totally me. interrupted you. So you went to Montreal to live. So I went to, to Montreal. French. Yeah. Yes. And this... And I found a job at a bakery and I had done a few fondant cakes back at, at my house because after university, I had like nothing to do. I was working with a teacher, but I, I don't know. I, I didn't like look for a job in this period of six months because I knew I was going to go to Canada. So I, I've always liked like doing stuff with my hands, I don't know, sewing or coloring or whatever. So I decided to try fondant because a girl sent a cake to my mom. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. What is this? I've never seen a fondant cake before in my life. So I bought the stuff. I did like some little cupcakes for um for a foundation for kids with kids with cancer. And that's where it all started. I took like really super cute pictures of that. And when I was in Canada, I interviewed for this job and I showed her whatever I had done. And she was like, okay, you're hired. So I'm like, oh, great. I started working there. I was baking cupcakes and decorating cakes, serving ice yeah. cream. It was a cupcake shop. And I liked that. So, and I wanted to stay in Canada for another year. So I applied for a school in Toronto. That was, it was a confectionery arts school. 
Oh, cool. Yes. And I was like, Dad, you know, it's, that's a little expensive, but I would really love to go to this school. And he said, yes. And I was like, whoa. So I moved from Montreal to Toronto. I went okay. to this school for six months. And then I stayed there for another six months working at a, like a wedding cake store where I learned a lot. And then I came back to Mexico City and started my own business. I would have loved to stay in Canada, but I didn't like my permit, my permit, my permit, my permit. Um, yeah. Come say say. Um, expired. Expired. That's what. My <laughs> permit expired. And I, I never thought about like going with a lawyer and saying hi, and I would like to apply right. for um, citizenship because. Like a like, J1 I didn't reason. know people yeah. do that. I did yeah. that in Canada. Now I know. Everyone goes to Canada to get their citizen, their Canadian citizenship. So I yeah. wasted two years <laughs> living there without trying for that. And I was like, well, I don't know. My goal wasn't to live in Canada forever. It would right. be great. But what, well, like, like you wanted to go there to learn French? Like, why, like, was that kind of your thing? Or did something else lead you there? My father studied there when he was okay. young as well so that was he kind of like uh put the idea in my mind okay um but still I just wanted to live elsewhere I okay. wanted to just be by myself I had a boyfriend back then I need to get out of that relationship you know and that was yeah. like my way out so see you later I'm gonna go live in another country because yeah. otherwise I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be able to just leave you so that was maybe one of the that's reasons. smart yeah and Canada would let you work and study that was ah, like, great I for see. me because I wanted to work. I wanted yeah. to do something, not only study and because I've I have I've I've never been a party girl because normal you know, twenty years old twenty year olds they normally do this, they go study and then they go party. Right. I don't like that. So I was like, okay. what am I gonna do? So I ended up studying, running and working. <laughs> okay. Okay. So yeah, so then you came back to Mexico City. Mexico Sorry, I was like okay. Yes, my father bought me a, a fridge, an oven, um, a couple of tables, and I just started decorating with, you know, friends and family. I started taking good pictures. I created my Instagram account. So I started working and from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. all by myself until I had to hire someone and then I hired someone else and then I hired someone else. It's called Montequilla. 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 So it's Mantequilla is butter in Spanish. Okay. So I just changed the letter with Mon because of my name. It's like a right. combination from of words there. But so, so Montequilla. Yeah. Yes. So okay. what I did for like four years before meeting friends and getting married, all I did was run and work. So Montequilla started started um, started growing. I had more cakes and more cakes. Then the I had like five employees, but the, five or six employees. But that but that time, I was still in my dad's garage. Like I started inside a little room and then I was outside with all the cars and my dad was like, oh, you got to get out of here. But I didn't <laughs> want to rent the space because whenever I, I saw a leasing, I would look at the prices and I'd be like, no, there's no way I'm going to pay this money. <laughs> so then Francisco appeared in my life and he he's, um, he's owner of this big space in Coyoacán, in Mexico City. So he was like, oh, I have this space for you. Would you come here? The universe and, aligned. Yes, yes, yes. So by, so that's when I decided to get Montequilla out of my house. I built myself a beautiful studio. Um, and I've been there for been there three years now. Wow. And it's great. I, need, I really needed to get out of my dad's house because yeah. they were all really sick of hearing the doorbell ring all the time. <laughs> I think, though, that's great that you had the opportunity that your family helped you in the beginning. I mean, that's always a nice thing, I mean, to be able to have that. But, yeah, I'm sure. And so and so, how do you, like, do you feel like there are a lot of parallels between your training for running and, like, building a business? And, yeah, yes. like, where do you get from the two together, I guess? Yeah, definitely. I know consistency is the key. Like, you read it every, like every day on Instagram, you read consistency yeah. overcomes um, motivation. Consistency is the key. But when you really see that it is true, you're like, oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I know that if I'm not consistent, I'm not going to get better running. I know, well, I kind of didn't know at that time, but did. It, it was, I don't know, it's funny. Because I never told myself, if I'm consistent, I'm going to make this business grow. I just right. kind of knew I had to work. Right. 
and if my work was getting better and I was getting better clients, people were seeing the cakes, everything would just um, um, keep on going great. Yeah. So now that I look back, I'm like, yeah, I was super consistent. I'm still are. But when I was all by myself, I would I could have just said, no, I'm only taking two cakes this week and I'm going to do nothing during the whole right. day because I don't need to do anything or whatever. But no, I really worked from morning to like 12 o'clock at night. My mom would come and say, Monica, you have to eat. I ate, but I was like making my cake and eating like that. Mom, I'm not going to finish. I'm not going to finish. And she was like, oh my God, you're so crazy. <laughs> do you, like, what do you, do you love it still so much? Like, and what do you love about, like, having your own business and being an entrepreneur and what you do? Right now, what I love most is that I'm, like, I own my time. Because before pa having Patricio, I was still there. Not yeah. as much as I used to be because now I have employees. But I would go there, like, I'd be there, like, at 7 in the morning and maybe live at 3, 4, depend, depending on the work. But when I, when Patricia was born, I just had no choice. I was like, right. I, can't, I can't come in here. I can't help you. I can help you from being, from my home, my house. Right. But I can't be here, like, actually making the cakes. So I had to let go, which is very hard. <laughs> Especially I'm sure. For, yes, especially for cakes that you started making by yourself, your hands, your creativity, your ideas. So letting uh, letting go of that was tough, but life said, "Well, that's it." <laughs> you know, and now are, this one. So yeah. now are you back? Like, uh, you know, Patricio is two. Is two. So he goes to school from eight to three. So. I go like a couple of times to Montequilla. It's like 40 minutes away from my house. So tra depends on okay. traffic. It, okay. it could be 20, but normally it's like 45 to an hour. So traffic's not good. But and I go there. I just see how things are going. I'm always on the phone taking uh, orders, um, okay. buying stuff, you know, all, all the stuff that you got to do when you have a business. I'm in charge of that because it's, it's only me. I don't have any, um, how do you say that? I forget words. Uh... Like when you're in a business with someone, your partner. partner. I don't have yeah. any partners. <laughs> we would be such a good team on charades. <laughs> like if yeah. there was a game show. Yeah. So I do everything that that business requires. Yeah. And I don't make cakes anymore. I made one a couple of weeks ago. I do love it, but yeah. I have to choose. I have, you know, I can't do everything. And besides, I'm only free from like... I leave Patricio at school at 8.39, so I get there by 10, and then I have to leave by 1, so I only have, like, four hours. So I think about those times when I had, like, nothing else to do, and I could stay there for hours and not care about anything else. They were fun. They were good, but now it's yeah. not. Um, things have changed. Um, yeah. That's great, too. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and, like, you grow and you evolve and, like, all of those things. Um, do you feel like you're like a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs start businesses and like they really struggle with social media. Do you feel like because you have built your platform that it, and, and obviously it's kind of like, seems like it's all gone together. Like you built your platform, you were on your TV show, you were a runner, like you were baking, like everything kind of seems like it's happening simultaneously. But do you feel like having that graphic design and having the social media background has been really helpful for you as an entrepreneur? Yes, yeah, super helpful because I never doubted anything. I knew I always trusted social media, even though it wasn't as big as seven years ago. I did. Like I built my own website, so oh, wow, that's okay. an expense I didn't have to like, pay. I took my own pictures. I knew how to use a camera. I knew stuff about lightning. I designed my own logo. Um, it did help. I mean, yeah. I don't know if four years in university <laughs> studying graphic de design are worth what I did, yeah. but maybe if I hadn't done graphic design, I actually was going to go for um, chemical, chemical, come on, you yeah. chemical engineering. That was my first choice. When I signed up for university, I'm like, I'm going to be a chemical engineer. But then I decided I was not going to be that. So it, I ended up being a graphic designer. And I'm like, well, just things lead to other things. So graphic yeah. designing led to Montequilla being a reality and kind of being so an cool. easy thing to be done. So are you I gonna, like, would you ever like bring or do like a pop-up with your bakery at any events? Like when you go to these marathons, if you weren't running? I don't know. 
would it be even worth it right because people have to come like do you can't ship baked goods like no, and, and I do, like, I do 99%, 99% fondant cakes, and this with a lot of figurines yeah. and really, Fun. like, intricate cakes. So they're kind of hard to <laughs> take from one place to the other. Right, right. So there's been quite an expo, well, a few expos that we've been invited to, but... Yeah. I don't know, it doesn't... Cookbook? Even, no, not really. Cook TV show? Another show? <laughs> Food I, no, they, they actually told me to go again to the new season. I think it's season, it was season four, or they were trying to like reunite the best competitors oh, in like yeah. all the seasons. They told me to go a year ago. I had said yes, but then I started talking to the other people that were with me during that show and they were like, no, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. Patricia was like six months old. So yeah. I ended up saying no, and I don't regret it because that show, like the first season of that show was like the greatest hit. All of the others were like, eh. So that was like my first reason. Then the money was not that good. So I'm right. like, no, it's not worth it. Besides, Montequilla is way bigger now. It's, yeah. it's more of a serious thing. So it would have been harder to let go. Um, and then Patricio as well. Yeah. So I don't regret it, mainly because of Patricio. I mean, yeah. so it was only three months, but three months is a lot for a baby. And I would have yeah. missed him all the time. I remember I was with a mom at that time, and she would always talk about her daughter and how much she missed her. And I'm like, come you on. You don't want to be like that. Yeah. Yeah. It can't be that hard. Now that I'm a mom, I'm like, yes, obviously. Every time we go like three, four days somewhere, we're always FaceTiming and how's the baby? I mean, I don't feel awful for letting him, but... I'm still like, I want to see him. I love yeah. seeing his smiley face. And... He's adorable. It's, yeah, people need to go on your worse. Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Is he talking? He is a talking a lot. And yeah. I talk to him in English. So he mixes Spanish and English. And I just find that's the cutest thing ever. <laughs> that's so cute. And that's he's really cute. We always play um, music in English for, um, to him. So he's starting to sing in English. And I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. That's yes. so awesome. I love that. I love that. This has been so much fun. I, are, you, are you doing New York City in November? I think I am. I want to get pregnant, I told you. So if I... Uh, did oh, I you, tell you or not? No, you didn't. Well, I, you we want to get pregnant. Okay. So... Chances are that if I do, I run the New York City Marathon, I will be pregnant. Cool. It's going to be a hard thing, <laughs> but I don't know. That's a challenge I need to tick off my list. Yeah, no, I'm sure you'll be great. I mean, you have to, it's a whole different thing, but I mean, that's so exciting. That's super but yeah, exciting. Unless like something goes wrong or the doctor says, no, you can't run for whatever reason. I'm yeah. I'm like, no, 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 don't talk about no. it. I don't think it's going to happen. So yes, yeah, I'm probably going to be there. Hopefully that's I'll see awesome. you. That's awesome. So we can meet up in person and maybe do something live, something fun. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this has been so much fun. I'm glad that we connected. It was so really so great meeting you at the Westin. Awesome. So, well, I will I see you like on in New York. And you put it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't really ask you a lot about social media, but I mean, obviously, you're doing your thing, like daily posting, sharing your stories. Yes, I just share my daily life. Sometimes it's kind of hard, like doing social media and working on the baby and and seriously sometimes I'm like I wish I didn't have a social media but it's fun as well and you get yeah. good stuff from that but yeah. it's super like it takes time it's a full job people don't know people no. nobody knows how like I just did something for someone and they were like wow this took a lot of time I'm like no. yeah yeah, like yeah, three then, minute, you watch a one minute and 30 second video, probably took five hours. <laughs> you have to be creative. You have to come, yeah, up, have to come up with the idea, idea for yourself. You have to shoot. You have to be like everything a movie requires, but it's all in you. Yes. <laughs> and then you have like a lot of competition. So right. It's hard. Yeah. But, but it's so awesome. Yeah. I try not to stress a lot about it. So. That's good. That's good attitude. Um, well, this has been super fun. Thank you, Thank you Monica, for being mm -hmm. on the podcast.